It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Larry Lasseur from the CBS News staff and John B. Oakes from the editorial board of the New York Times. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Edmund Michelet, member of the French Senate and former Minister of War. The agreements to rearm an independent West Germany will have far-reaching significance. There can be no doubt of that. But these agreements have yet to be ratified, and that involves the people of France and Germany, as well as the governments. So we'd like to ask our guest tonight, who has been a member of the French resistance until he spent two years in Dachau as a result, how he feels personally about the rearming of Germany. Well, I think it's the most important uh, event, by far, since uh, the end of the war. And uh, the most encouraging, too, Excuse me if I don't speak very good English. Well, uh, Senator Michelet, uh, nevertheless, you are not worried about a renewal of German aggression against France? No. Because I believe in the war of Chancellor Adenauer. You know. Chancellor Adenauer is not a Bismarck or a Hitler, especially. You know. And I think his word is important and is important too is the control of uh, our American f and British friends in that settlement. But what about the possibility of taking you into a war to unite Germany, to unite the eastern provinces? Well, I think, I, I, I really think uh, their settlement avoid this danger. That's what I think. And I think America, Americans and British, they are there with us, you know. As part of NATO, you yes. yes. That's why I uh. think it's a good thing. Well, Senator Michelet, do you feel any bitterness? After all, you were in Dachau concentration camp for two years. Do you feel any personal bitterness towards the Germans? Well, we, I think we have to... This is the past, you know. Uh, there is a new danger, a new danger of uh, totalitarianism, of tyranny, and uh, we must uh, settle by uh, the old animosity between our two countries. I really think that uh, in France, the majority of people is for reconciliation with Germany. Well, now, will the SAR settlement be a means of reconciliation, or does Certainly it... Certainly, the SAR settlement is, uh, yes, it's a very good thing in that way, uh, because, you know, it, uh, it ends opposition between our two countries. Do you think permanently it's yes, settled? I think so. Well, what is the significance of that settlement of the Tsar land? Well, it's the first stone building Europe, uh, first step in the way of Europe. A building a European unity? Europa. Yes, Europa, yes. That's why it's important. Who do you think came out better in that arrangement, Senator, uh, between France and Germany on the Saar? Did the French get practically everything they wanted? In well, the French get something, but Germany too get something. Possibility of uh, a change with France, possibility of uh, uh, investment of doing many th important things with us in Africa, for instance, you know. That's why I think uh, this agreement is a very good thing, as well as for France, as for Germany. Uh, the Germans have no colonies whatsoever in Africa, but do you think well, they will now work with the French in, uh, well in, in, in North Africa and West Africa? I think colonies is uh, not the real name, the real word now, you know. We don't speak of colony, we speak of Union Francaise, it's not the same thing, you know. And we think, really, we think, really, that with Germany it's possible to do very, to do very great things in Africa. So you don't 
fear that in Africa there may be a development similar to that in the Far East, in Indochina. Oh, something I know, it's the same question, you know. There is, there is a very big, very great difference between Indochina, Indo near the China, and uh, Africa, and North Africa, you know. I was thinking of the nationalist movements in well, Morocco it's the same, it's not the same thing at all. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator Michelet, do you think that the French Assembly will ratify these uh, agreements on Germany? I think it, and I hope it, too. I will vote for him and my friends go list too. Well, now, the opposition party to Premier Mendes France uh, is the Catholic Party. Well, now, will they go along on this agreement? There is no Catholic Party in France. There are Catholics in every party. I am a Roman Catholic. Uh, there are many Catholics with the Gaullists, and Gaullists will vote for Mendes France. They, they are with him, you know, in this important question. But some of the elements of the uh, German government, some of the opposition to Adenauer, are grumbling about the agreement on the Tsar. Do you think that Germany yeah. will go along? But uh, Adenauer is, is strong in Germany. You know, he has a great, big position. And I think after his tour in uh, America, he is quite able to obtain what he wants from his parliament. Do you feel that Mondes France has the general support of the French people and what yeah, he's been yes, doing? Uh, yes, behind him he has the, the, the youth. He's the most popular man in France since uh, General de Gaulle, that's a fact. And it's important. Is that based on the Far Eastern settlement? And it was for the Far Eastern settlement and for the, the new style, you say, still, yes. style. He, he what, ab with. what about his internal policy? Yes. Could you he tell us something of that? Well, I think he is a social man, you know. He, you know. he knows what he wants about this social part of his uh, work. And when he wants something, uh, some he gets it. You heard it. Our, our Secretary of State, uh, John Foster Dulles, has said that there is no tension now between Germany and France. Is uh, that true in your oh estimation? That's, uh, that's really true, yes. Well, how do you account for that? Well, you know, we are tired of making war between us, Germany and France. That's a fact, you know. Last war, we are, both of us, very, we, are, we, we gain and lose it, you know, not at the same time. So, you know, we, we see the war Little last, the civil war in Europe, I think. That's what we think. All wars would be civil wars in Europe now because the world is gotten think, smaller? I think so. Would you feel that the French people will welcome uh, Germany in NATO then? Yes, I Will think. welcome German sure. oh, I think so. and a German army? Yes, I think so, and I hope so too. Well, what safeguards are there? Senator Michelet, against a renewal of German well, aggression? Safeguard is especially the control of uh, America, and American uh, army and uh, American control. And the British entrance and into, British entrance uh, too, into the continent. Yes. Well, in the other w then, M Senator Michelet, could I ask you this? Do you think that this, uh, these agreements on rearming of Germany mean an end to the Cold War? It means, in Western Europe, an end of the Cold War it could uh, be the beginning of the end of the Cold War, yes, I think Well, so. then you believe that uh, there is such a thing as coexistence, uh, Senator Michelet? Um, it's a serious matter, you know, coexistence. We, in the United States, our duty is to try to avoid war, you know, to be ready for it, but to prepare peace. So I think it's coexistence, you know, it's uh, an important question. Mm. Would Miss uh, Senator Michelet, what does this settlement with Germany mean to France in particular? Why will this do France good, In uh, what? the settlement with Germany? Uh, so it's, it's good for France because, uh, I told you, it's the end of an opposition between our two countries, you know, and it permits France to exchange products with Germany, you know. 
that's why it's a good thing. Do you it, think it, it's a, it, it's a, it? I think it's a really the beginning of Europe. Do you think it would tend to lessen the strength of the Communist Party inside France? I order? think so, and I hope so too. What is this is Premier Mendes France doing about the Communists inside of France? Well, the best thing he has to do is to develop a uh, social uh, program. You know. Is that actually progressing that's now? Uh, that's now. Has there been the, time? The, for? Now the, ne the next term of his program, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's why we help it. And what help him. Yes. Yeah, so and what is he doing about uh, trying to curb the growth of communism in France now? If the best thing he has to do is, as I told you, to develop social laws, to obtain more wages for workers. Our workers are not so well paid as your workers, you know. That's why in Europe we are perhaps more communist than you are. But Senator Michelet, when you say that the uh, settlement of the Tsar means that the possibility of Europa, a grand concept, do you see a similar settlement spreading around Europe? Yes, I think so. It's possible, I think. It's a, I, I told you, and I really think it's the beginning. It's the beginning of Europe, uh, or the best way. And you, feel, be you feel better than EDC? Certainly. EDC was not serious, for my, for, for my mind. Serious with us. Yes. Well, thank you but very I'm much, Senator Michelet. It's a great pleasure to have you here to tell us this. The opinions expressed on the Longines Chronoscope were those of the speakers. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry Lasseur and John B. Oakes. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Edmond Michelet, a member of the French Senate and former Minister of War. The old words accuracy and reliability take on a new and a true meaning when applied to a Longines watch. Because one knows where he stands with time all the time, a Longines watch brings you priceless peace of mind. Now for almost a century, Longines has made watches, which by observatory measurements have consistently been equal to or superior to the highest achievements of each decade. Further proof is found in this fact. Among the finest watches of the world, only Longines watches have been honored with 10 World's Fair grand prizes and 28 gold medals. Yet, though Longines is one of the finest of all watches, there are many beautiful models for both ladies and gentlemen for as little as 7150. Whatever the type, whatever the style, Longines has made it for you. So when next you buy a watch, for yourself or perhaps as a Christmas gift to someone near and dear to you, remember these facts about Longines watches. And remember too, that throughout the world, millions of men and women agree that the satisfaction which comes from owning a Longines watch is above and beyond price. Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. At Longines Whitnor Jewelers, see Atmos, the perpetual motion clock created by Le Coultre. Atmos runs without winding, without electricity, powered only by variations in the temperature of the atmosphere. Atmos, product of Le Coultre, division of Longines Whitnor.